Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of A Rinky Tink of Oz by L. Frank Baum. So I read this as part of my buddy read of the Oz series with Joel Swagman. I will link to Joel's video below, um, if I remember, of course. I actually have very little, I mean, what's that? That's about eight tabs to share with you guys. Um, so I'm going to read the blurb, I'm going to check out my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Never question the truth of what you fail to understand, for the world is filled with wonders. When the island of Pingaree is invaded by the barbarian warriors of Regos, it is up to Prince Inga to rescue his captured parents and save his fellow islanders from slavery. With the help of the jolly king Rinkitink and Bilbil, his surly goat companion, the young prince must trust in the power of three mysterious coloured pearls. But will their magic be enough to liberate the Pingarees? Um, yeah, as I say, very little for me to say. We have here, um, this is obviously L. Frank Baum trying to give a bit of a moral to the readers, I suppose. So there's this, obviously, this talking bloody pearl. What is this, my father, exclaimed the prince amazed. Do you tell me that a pearl can speak? It sounds impossible. Your doubt is due to your ignorance of fairy powers, returned the king gravely. Um, so yes, and then the, the pearl says, never question the truth of what you fail to understand, for the world is filled with wonders. Um, so that's basically telling kids to keep an open mind, I suppose. There's a few typos in this, so we've got here. Be patient and we will make the attempt, replied Inga, encouragingly. And he ran to search, full stop, the ruins for a rope with the the beginning with a lowercase t. Very odd. We get this. Uh, I am sorry to hear you speak of your kind master in such a way. All men are deserving of respect, being the highest of living creatures. And kings deserve respect more than others, for they are set to rule over many people. See, I don't think... Being a king en entitles you to any respect. Uh, you have to earn your respect. And also, I don't think that men are any better than other creatures. So, we have another weird bit of punctuation. Therefore, comma, being of greater importance than you, comma, it is just and right that I take, comma, your boat and return to my own country in it. Why is there a comma before your boat? That makes no sense. Some nice, uh, I, I agree with this line here. Can you fight King Ringy Tink? I have never tried, was the answer. In time of danger, I have found it much easier to run away than to face the foe. Yeah, that's what I do too. But then I'm a pacifist. A few bits here I want to read about the Gnome King. So we have, this is page 137 of 190. This is the first mention of Oz, as far as I noticed. Uh, and then we get, the word Gnome means one who knows. And these people are so called because they know where all the gold and silver and precious stones are hidden in the earth. A knowledge that no other living creatures share with them. So I just like that bit of lore about where the name Gnome comes from. Another bit that feels as though Frank, L. Frank Baum's trying to give a lesson to people. He said, um, He sat down and thought earnestly on the means of escape from his danger, and at last a clever idea came to his mind. This is the way to get ideas. Never to let adverse circumstances discourage you, but to believe there is a way out of every difficulty, which may be found by earnest thought. And then just fucking Dorothy. Like, it's page 170 of page 194. Dorothy happens to be looking in the magic mirror and is like, oh, this story's been happening. Quick, let me get my uh, little bit of airtime in it. And she goes to Ozma being like, can I, uh, can I piss off over there and out these guys? Um, and so she does. Um, and then this, just here, I wanted to read this little bit out because... And here I just wanted to read this little bit out because my friend Sabrina noticed these eggs on the cover and she was like, What's, what book is that with the eggs on? Eggs may seem to you to be a queer weapon with which to fight, but the little girl well knew their value. The gnomes are immortal, that is, they do not perish as mortals do, unless they happen to come in contact with an egg. If an egg touches them, either the outer shell or the inside of the egg, the gnomes lose their charm of perpetual life and thereafter are liable to die through accident or old age, just as humans are. For this reason, the sight of an egg fills a gnome with terror, and he will do anything to prevent an egg from touching him, even for an instant. So, when Dorothy took her basket of eggs with her, she knew that she was more powerfully armed than if she had a regiment of soldiers at her back. I see you are under an enchantment. Indeed, I believe you to be Prince Bobo of Bobo Land. This is a great discovery, said the wizard, addressing Dorothy and the others of the party. A good many years ago, a cruel magician transformed the gallant prince of Bobo land into a talking goat. And this goat, being ashamed of his condition, ran away and was never after seen in Bobo land, which is a country far to the south of here, but bordering on the deadly desert, opposite the land of Oz. I heard of this story long ago and know that a diligent search has been made for the enchanted prince without result. But I am well assured that in the animal you call Bilbil, I have discovered the unhappy prince of Bobo land. 
Okay. So we're going that route, are we? Uh, but one thing I did actually really like, uh, this is a song. Um, Rinky Tinky says, the beauty of life is in its sudden changes. No one knows what is going to happen next. And so we are constantly being surprised and entertained. The many ups and downs should not discourage us. For if we are down, we know that a change is coming and we will go up again. While those who are up are almost certain to go down. My grandfather had a song which well expresses this. And if you will listen, I will sing it. Okay, we're going to try and play this song. I don't know how this is going to go. I haven't practiced this at all. I have no... No notion of melody, no notion of chords. We're gonna try A, D and E. I reckon that's about in me, in my vocal range. I've been drinking beer, can you tell? Oh, now I've got the uh, Philosopher's Song from Monty Python in my head. Emmanuel Camp was a real piss and he was very rarely stable. A mighty king once ruled the land but now he's baking pies. A pauper on the other hand is ruling strong and wise. A tiger once in jungles raged but now he's in a zoo. A lion captive born in cage now roams the forest through. A man once slapped a poor boy's paid and made him weep and wail The boy became a magistrate and put the man in jail A sunny day succeeds the night, it's summer then it snows Right off goes wrong and wrong comes right as every wise man knows Yeah! So yeah, that's literally all I have to share with you, then it ends Dorothy goes along and saves the day. Um, this, you can tell from reading this that L. Frank Baum is sick of Oz. This was basically a standalone novel or book or whatever um, featuring Rinky Tink that just goes to Oz right at the end for the whole Deus Ex Machina kind of plot resolution thing. I would say I would have enjoyed this more if just Oz wasn't a part of it, if it was a standalone story, uh, which is exactly what happened with the last one as well. Um, Joel's talked about this a little bit in his reviews. Basically, uh, L. Frank Baum had started some other series. They didn't do so well. And he kind of reused the characters and brought them to Oz when he was going bankrupt. And you just, you get that vibe. He didn't want to write about Oz. Um, and he just uses Oz and Ozma and a magic mirror and a belt of wishing and all of that shit just as a way to resolve all of the loose threads of the plot. And I just think it would have been better without Oz. Same as the last book, that's two in a row now, where it's like, they would have been better if they were just not part of the Oz series and were standalone books of their own. Um, I do plan to finish reading the Oz series, both um, the canonical L. Frank Baum books, and then the ones that were continued after his death. And I also want to read L. Frank Baum's standalones. But I just hope that the continuation of the series after he dies, that there's a bit more love for Oz and that they feel like Oz books rather than just random aside things. I've got a reminder for Dane. So I hope they either do that or again with the standalones, I hope that he doesn't then have to crowbar Oz into it at the end and kind of ruin them that way. Overall, it was okay. It was like a 3.5 out of 5. Um, the this, this series has gone a bit up and down. It started at a high. Kind of came down a bit, then sort of did that bit, went down there, came back up a bit, a bit, and now you just get the feeling it's just on free fall towards the end. So I'm kind of glad that there aren't that many more of them to read. Um, but I will keep persevering. So there we have it, that's what I made of Rinky Tink of Oz by L. Frank Baum. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.